hello and welcome back and today we're going to be doing some 10 gigabit ethernet testing with the ds723 plus from synology we're going to be doing some hard drive and some ssd testing on 10 gbe and throughout this video it's worth highlighting that i am going to be connecting directly into this device i'm utilizing a 10 gbe to thunderbolt adapter connected to this laptop and i'm going to be running tests on a multitude of different platforms uh, of software benchmark testing that's going to be at auto disk benchmark uh, black magic and i'm going to be looking at um aja and these three tools are going to be testing on those hard drives and ssds so to see just what is the 10 gpe potential potential of this device but a few disclaimers straight off the bat first and foremost the hard drives that are being utilized inside this device are synology hard drives they are synology's own hat 5300 now there are other drives listed as compatible on this system you can use wd red and seagates and whatever but do bear in mind that these tests i'm running today because i'm running on synology's own hard drives these are kind of enterprise grade drives they're noisy drives so you're certainly going to hear them in the background by the way but these are drives that are generally data center class 7200 512 meg ram uh, or cache i should say and these are drives that can give you anywhere uh, up to and above 260 to close to 270 megs each they are not reflective of standard class regular class drives of under 8 tb these are 16 tb int class drives so do bear that in mind secondly i have got m2 nvmes inside this system and the ds723 like the 923 they are two NASes from synology currently at the time of recording the only two NASes that allow you to use m2 nvmes as storage pools so what i've done is one of these m2s i've already created a storage pool there uh, based on an shr standard class it's single drive and just to let you know straight away if you want to create um uh, an area of storage there on those storage pools highlight the drive in question select create storage pool click next select the ray configuration you want to go for so in my case it would be just a basic a standard drive on its own then i would click next click ok select the drive and boom i can go ahead click skip drive and then click apply and it will allow me to go ahead and create that storage pool something i've already done here with the other drive before it but that's not the only thing you can do a number of you have asked about this so just to let that out the way another thing you can do if you choose to is to go ahead and use one drive as a storage pool and another drive for caching you can do that so you've got your two drives of storage one drive for caching and one drive as another super fast storage pool but we're not going to use caching today we're just going to focus on our shr that's our mirrored raid for the two hard drives and our raid there of that m2 nvme now if you want to see raid zero testing or see individual kinds of testing analysis there then you're going to have to make your way over to my ds923 video where i went into a lot more detail um, about the architecture of the hard drives inside and the architecture and the differences between the raids we tested raid 0 raid 1 and raid 5 in that video but for now what we need to do next is create ourselves a storage pool um not a storage pool uh, we've created our um area of the volume there for the hard drives but we've not created a volume on the ssd so for that we need to go into create we create a volume we're going to go for the one that's got the ssd inside there we're going to max out that storage give it a name we're going to call this the nvme vol we're going to give that maximum capacity click next we're going to run that on a btrfs and we're going to let that finish then we're going to create a shared folder on there the reason for which will become clear in just a moment so we're going to go ahead create our new shared folder this is going to be on the ssds we're going to call this ssd share maybe one less s in it uh, we're going to disable the recycle bin because we don't need that we're going to click next we're going to click next we're not going to bother our integrity checks we're not we're just going to crack straight on uh, we're going to go ahead let it finish we're going to make sure that this account has access and there we go we've got our ssd share and we've got our multimedia and virtual images remember the multimedia is on the hard drives ssd share is on those nvmes next thing we need to do is create some share uh, some mapped network drives now i could use an iSCSI if i used an iSCSI we might see the tiniest bump in performance but just for the sake of simplicity we're just going to go ahead and use mapped network drives for today's video so if we search the local area network we found that 723 there's the ip connected on that 10 gbe connection and again as mentioned we're connecting to this device with a 10 gbe to thunderbolt adapter 
and the NAS itself, if we go into the control panel, we can go in to the network settings. And as you can see, we're connected via that IP via a 10 gigabits per second connection or one uh, 10,000 megabit uh, on a 9,000 jumbo frame or MTU. So we've got our shared folder, we've got our volumes and everything set up there. Next thing we're gonna do is make our way into Synology Assistant. We're gonna map a drive, head in, we can see that it's already, we're going to reuse the credentials from that one, click forward, and the one we're going for is our SSD share. We're going to create our shared folder. We're going to use that one maybe under the letter N. Let's find N. Again, reconnect at login. Why not? We're going to enter those credentials again to verify us. There we go. But bear in mind, of course, we are connecting to two network drives via that same connection point. So the next thing we want to do is start playing with AJA, Atto Disk Benchmark, and um, Black Magic Design, ignore any black screens you're seeing there. And these are the tools that we're going to be utilizing for today's tests as we benchmark 10 GBE connectivity on those M2 NVMEs and those Synology hard drives. Remember, at the time of recording, you can only use Synology SSDs in those M2 NVMe slots on this 10 on this 2 by 10 GBE NAS. Okay, so we've got our map network drive set up there. We've got the SSD for the NVMe and we've got the hard drives there on a separate shared folder. So next thing we want to do is run some of our tests. And for those of you that have followed this channel before, you will know about the problem I'm going to discuss. Largely, that when you perform any kind of performance test while simultaneously running OBS in the background, unless you are using an external capture device, and even then, because of the 10 GB connection going into a client machine, you need some kind of middle ground there. The unfortunate thing is, OBS will impact your performance. So although I can show you some performance figures, if I show you all of them live, you're going to see the results that can sometimes be as much as 15 or even 20% lower than you would expect. So for example, if I go into the hard drive shared array there, we go for a one gigabyte test file, you're going to see those performance measures all right for half the time, but still not absolutely great because right now my host client machine is trying to do stuff in the background with OBS and it's using up a lot of system resources. For example, you look at the uh, utilization there in the background and there's just a lot going on there. So what I can do is show you this. And what I'm gonna do now is uh, step away, turn off OBS for a bit and run a multitude of tests on 10 GBE. Just before we do that though, how about we see what the uh, provisional benchmarks are for that NVMe? Because if we're connecting via the NVMe drive of a 10 GBE, as you can see with OBS running, we're looking at five late 500s there in terms of performance. So what about if we turn off OBS and go through all of these results natively? Okay, so the tests have completed, so let's take a look. So first and foremost, let's take a little look at the Atto Disk benchmark. Now, in previous instances, I would have gone through loads and loads of tests here, but given we know this is a two-bay NAS, we have to factor in that saturation is key here. And because we've got these two drives in an SHR or RAID-enabled environment, if they were in a RAID 0, we probably would see higher performance measures. But if you're using that two-bay in a RAID 0 with no redundancy, I wouldn't recommend it. At least in the case of a RAID 1, you can see See that with one gigabyte file sizes there because remember we are transferring exactly one gigabyte externally we can see there that the drives in uh, write speed were capping out at a maximum 194 megabytes per second there using the hard drives as the target drive there with the two of them now when it came to the read speed because you're reading from both drives in the shr environment it means you are going to definitely get higher results and as you can see we managed to get quite an impressive little number uh, around about the 400 mark at 421 at the 512 kb mark so again some nice figures there now i could have gone higher into the larger capacities with the hard drives the reason i didn't was simply that on those hard drives there's going to be a factor of oversaturation on the 10 gbe and those drives and given those performance measures of uh, again around the 200 uh, megabytes per second 250 260 meg if we'd gone higher those numbers would have been quite diabolical and half the reason for this device having the 10 g testing in the first place is for those m2 nvmes but i'm going to keep them there on screen as a sense of relativity because if we move over to the m2 nvmes we can see a very different story. Now, in terms of write performance, we saw a cap of about 600 megabytes per second, very much in the late 500s, 
in terms of that write speed because although we weren't dealing with the uh, potential bottleneck of running OBS there in the background it is worth highlighting two very important things number one these are 400 gig Synology hard drive uh, SSDs they are not rated particularly high for performance and we weren't dealing with small little cap files here we were starting at one gigabyte big blocky files there for our testing the second thing to bear in mind and this unfortunately is something that's very very apparent something we saw in our ds93 plus performance testing the m2 nvme slots on this system have been capped although they are pcie gen 3 times 4 in physical architecture it looks like Synology have throttled them and downgraded them down to PCIe 3 times 1 or 1,000 megabytes per second. So it's not possible to exceed 1,000 megabytes per second or so given the PCI um, transmission there. And as you can see on the read performance, that is reflected. Because although we're using 10GBE and therefore 10G was always going to be the cap, we were never really going to see higher than that even without that 10g cap so the read speed there reaching 1 1.3 1 1.5 uh, gigabytes there so 1115 megabytes per second for example or 1150 i should say megabytes per second capped but you would have seen an improvement there overall in the iops compared to these two and the consistent iops as well but again we are still talking about a single drive being accessed and even if we pulled them together in a raid one or raid zero because of that cap there of the 10 GBE, we wouldn't see much more. We would have seen these numbers reach 1,000 either side, as we saw when we tested these two NVMEs on the 923 in a RAID 0 environment, but we're not going to see that here. But as we were using the M2 NVMEs, and we had the 10 G connection to kind of open up the bandwidth a bit, I decided to go for a 4 gigabyte test file. Four times the connection possible at any given time on this uh, adapter here of a 10 GBE, and the result was quite intriguing. First and foremost, the write speed consistently stayed at the 5 to 600 meg, which was weird, because if you look at the comparative numbers between the 4 gigabyte test file and the 1 gigabyte test file, what you saw was pretty much identical write numbers there. Now, that could be for one of several reasons. It could be the 10 GBE throttle in there, but I don't think so, because there's still a 1,000 megabytes per second to play with, and the read-write activities were not done simultaneously. They were turn-based. Consequently, there wouldn't have been uh, an oversaturation of 1,000 megs to create that cap and I think that's more to do with the capping of those PCIe's now in terms of read performance there rather than the 1.15 gigabytes that we saw before the heftiness of that file and these SSDs not being as higher performing as some of the third-party SSDs in the market uh, from WD and Seagate which uh, were less designed towards caching and durability and more towards flat out you know performance the result was we saw caps there of five to six hundred and peaking in some cases at seven to eight hundred megabytes per second still good numbers but again for m2 nvmes that are capable of thousands of meg a little less than i would have liked to have seen and again if we go into the iops it's going to be largely what we saw before there now Moving away from those, we can look at um, AJA. Now, in AJA, we performed, again, the same three styles of tests. The first test was performed with the hard drives, and as you can see, we saw very unrealistic read numbers there. Now, part of the big problem with that is the spin-up, because with hard drives, you need to do consistent numbers. So although the numbers you're about to see, because of OBS running here in the background, are going to be somewhat skewed is going to be interesting to see that sustained performance um because you're not going to see that 900 number you saw before you can see much more relatable numbers there overall they're still going to be capped because of obs but still much more reliable numbers than what you saw before because you have more time to burn in there over time rather than just a flat out one spin run that you saw earlier now, if we move away from that, we can move over to the SSDs. And the SSDs, once again, we're bearing in mind here that we are running, again, very unique testing. And as mentioned, go to the 923 for the extensive 10 GBE test videos. Um, but for now, as you can see, once again, we're seeing that cap of 1,000 because this time we are running on the SSDs in both of these tests. But this time, again, a 1 gigabyte test file and a 4 gigabyte test file there overall. 
So ultimately between them, we're seeing very similar and comparable numbers to the same thing we saw with um, uh, Atto Disc Benchmark here. Remember capping at that 5600 mark, but still hitting 1000 on read on the one gig test. And when we went to the four gig test, we can move that side by side there. We saw a very similar cap of that 5.8 number and around the 600s once again. So again, very comparable numbers and quite sustained throughput, kind of steady all the way through. And of course, the last thing we did was Black Magic. Now with Black Magic, uh, our testing there, let's bring Black Magic back up. I think I've buried it under here. With Black Magic, we saw write performance of 182 and read performance of 261 on the hard drives there. So let's go ahead and actually manually select that SSD area there. So we're going for the SSD share, select that one there. And again, we're gonna go for the one gig test first. Again, we're gonna see that bottleneck once again of using OBS, but we're seeing that 600. Oh, the other thing with Blackmagic I should mention, it does a kind of slow build up. So what you're gonna see is those numbers report and then get higher and higher as you can see there from that read and we're already starting to see the full saturation of that 10 gpe connection so if you're going to have mixed storage in this system you're going to have a 10g connection i would definitely recommend not using those m2 nvmes for caching use them for your raw storage pools at best use one as a storage pool and one as caching and just make sure that the data that lives on that ssd is using hybrid backup uh, sorry hyper backup to um back up and synchronize with a larger hard drive storage array you're not going to have a redundancy fallback but at the very least you'll have a synchronized backup with the hard drives internally that you can take advantage of there but again reasonable enough performance and if we go for something bigger let's go back to the four gig test that we saw earlier we should see not dissimilar numbers but once again be ready for that slow build up on the read side there and it should give us the overall performance that we kind of expected to see between these it's a real shame that Synology has dictated to throttle these m2 nvme bays in the way that they have done i mean again we've still not had a full official reason for that beyond cooling which does make a sort of sense given that chassis was designed with only hard drive storage arrays and m2 nvmes or storage pools can get rather hot but still nonetheless i think having these m2 nvmes on pci gen 3 times 4 architecture and capping them at 3 times 1 it's going to annoy some people and i think Yes, you're going to be able to use SSDs, but while at the moment they are limited to only Synology SSDs and only for use in 3 times one capping, and remember, while they're on the right-hand side of the screen while we're running our performance tests, hence you're seeing what this is here on screen, right now at the time of recording, I'm a bit iffy about the M2 NVMe storage pools on the DS723. I love having the feature. I don't think it's been done its service. And yes, we will be doing a follow-up test on this, comparing without the benchmarks, without the test performance, without all the other stuff going on with OBS, between the DS723 Plus and the QNAP TS264. Two NASs that have M2 NVMe slots, both of which are capped at 1,000 megs. And for their own different reasons, I might add, and we're going to see just how that all pans out in the comparison. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, let me know in the comments. Again, I know this has been a somewhat unconventional speed test. I'll say as much in the comments there. And I strongly, strongly, for the third time, recommend checking out the DS923 10GBE speed test, which is far more extensive. I wanted to go a slightly different route for this one because they're such similar analyses. Apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you did. Subscribe to learn more. Free advice over on NAS Compares link below and I'll see you next time.